I'm not gonna lie. Figuring out how to start these things is always the uh, always the toughest part, man. Right? You gotta well you gotta shoot. have an engaging seeing, tie-in. Seeing when Batman Begins came out was easy for me. So 2005 was a big year for Mr. Super Oz. I don't know what you guys were doing, but I enlisted in the army in 2005. Well, damn, I was in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> I was 15 in high school. <laughs> So, uh, l- l- slightly different paths. Like, yeah. Uh, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, on tax day, April 15th of 2005, I, uh, I shipped off to basic training. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a big year for me. Well, yeah. you know what the funny thing is? What's up? I did not see this movie in theaters when it first came out. I was not even really a Batman fan. What? So, I totally skipped this movie. How can you and, not be a Batman fan? And I watched it on, uh... Well, because remember I told you that the Batman uh, and Robin movie. Oh, it burned you. Yeah, it burned me with just watching Batman. And you, I just, you were just uh, like, I'm done. Never you were like again. Warner Brothers, so you were you were scared. Right. And, and <laughs> I, I saw the trailers. I, I, can't, I don't I can't, want to touch. I can't it be hurt again. Right. And I just, and I saw the trailers. I was like, that's a tank. And you know, I was just like, it didn't look. The, to me, the trailers didn't sell what the movie. Was. And but also, I didn't put things into context. Mm-hmm. And um, I just skipped this movie, and I actually watched it like two years after it was released because I brought it on a DVD. Ah, old school. Yeah, and oh my god, was I in love? Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, you realize, yeah. <laughs> you realize at that moment. Oh man, I missed out. Yeah. Well, and the good thing is, by you waiting a couple of years, they probably already announced that there was a sequel coming. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because uh, if you waited until two thousand seven to watch, then. 2008 was when... Uh, yeah, 2009. Yeah. Oh, was it 8? Yeah, yeah, well, according to the Voodoo, uh, 2009 is when the Dark Knight dropped. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was All right, right. my apologies. Yeah, that's right. okay. Oh, I only know... It, it, it felt like 2008. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, like I said, unless Voodoo lied to me, very well could have. But you know what, you're right, because it came out the same year Iron Man did. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, yeah, that's right. a great You're one. right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I know that is because I got back from Iraq, and then I went to the movie theater a bunch. Ah, good times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I used, to, so. I used to walk seven miles to the movie theater. Wow. Oh, just just get the exercise in. Oh well, uh, it was just something fun to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Obviously, I didn't see it in theaters because I was again six. <laughs> 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 well, so it, it blows me away when when you say that. Yeah, so <laughs> nah, it's all good. Yeah, it's just, I ain't mad about it. It's just how time is, man. Time's crazy like that. But um, yeah. So I don't. I actually didn't see it until after I watched. Uh, the second movie, The uh, Dark Knight, mm. which was funny, watching it backwards. I'm like, oh, that's how we got, and then that's who we tra- and Ah, okay, I'm putting everything together now in this universe. Because before, I'm just like, damn, Joe, what a, what a great feeling. But how did Batman get all this shit? Well, yeah, and that's the beauty yeah. of uh, Batman Begins, is it sets up beautifully the groundwork for what is to come, especially within... The Dark Knight. Right. I, I say a little less so for The Dark Knight Rises because I feel like a lot of what it does is express regret. <laughs> his, oh, his, I think that's a great way to yeah. describe it. Yeah. But but let's uh, let's stick to the beginning with Batman Begins first, and we'll get to the second and third films. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, just a, just a funny thing to make myself look stupid for a couple seconds. For you. Um. So. Like I said, I watched these movies out of order uh, originally when I, on, upon, upon first viewing. Uh, so I didn't know Batman Begins was actually the movie that came before this because it didn't have Dark Knight in the title. Mm. So it, it would have felt disjointed. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so I, so just on initial viewing, I'm like, wait, wait so Batman Begins in the same... And then I realized, oh wait, that's the same actor, that's the same Alfred, just a different... Oh, I'm just stupid. Okay. okay. Well, I I can see your point, yeah. uh, especially being a youngin. Yeah. Uh, because I could see, the Dark Knight Rises being, the rise of the Dark Knight. Right. Theoretically, you would think. And then, like, let's say that Batman Begins was called Dark Knight Rises. Then you have the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Right. And then Nightfall. If that was the thing, and it was the Dark Knight trilogy, at least Knight would be in all of them. K K N I G H Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what you mean. Yeah. And so, uh, I can see where you're coming from, but I, 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 I'm going to suppose that when Batman Begins was in production, and then also subsequently produced, they probably didn't realize they were going to call the second and third one 
things unrelated to Batman begins. Yeah, yeah. that's one of those things that uh, obviously has the benefit of hindsight. But uh, just a little little thing I thought I'd bring up just Absolutely. because we probably it really isn't that big a deal. Yeah, uh, but when when I was watching all of these movies, I struggled big time to take notes. Um, so much so that my first note in Batman Begins is one hell of a mountaintop because I missed uh, all of the, the the falling through the well, being scared by the bats. I missed uh, being locked up and the fights. And what I mean by missed is I was so engaged with the movie Batman Begins that I I forgot to write things down. <laughs> and so when when Ra's al Ghul tells Bruce Wayne, billionaire. Uh, if you get this blue flower and you bring it up to uh, the mountaintop, then I can help you find the right path. Um, then I was like, oh, I saw that, I saw that beautiful screen, and I, I saw that uh, the, the mountaintop that Bruce was looking up at. And I was like, wow, that's one hell of a mountaintop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I was, and then I was subsequently like, man, I'm not taking enough notes. <laughs> <laughs> it was but, that that moment I realized, wow, one note. All right. Uh, but that, that, to me personally, is a compliment toward... Um, the the medium that we're enjoying mm-hmm. if I struggle to take notes with it because I'm getting lost in it. I can I can think of plenty of times, uh, even in the third film in this franchise, where I take notes and they're not in the positive. They're they're realizing what I'm seeing is some sort of antithetical visual or or storytelling piece to what I think should be being done. And so uh, like I said, I don't think a lack of notes is actually a bad thing uh, because it just means you're you're having fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely more of a compliment to how the story was put together. Yeah, uh, so I love this movie. Yeah. Um, genuinely, I um, and the reason why because watching it again and like and now basically in today's standards, I love how people always say that they want a mature story. Mm-hmm. But usually, what they kind of mean is violence. Yeah. To the boys. Yeah, the boys. like the they boys. want the boys. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that doesn't mean that's necessarily mature. Absolutely. To me, Batman Begins is a mature story. Mm. Why is that? Because Bruce Wayne as a character, you see his struggles as a man, understanding. Uh, for instance, uh, I love the scene when he questions. The, uh, the notions of right and wrong because he had to steal for the first time mm-hmm. because he was hungry. Right. But you also see him give up his food to someone young because he's like, okay, I, I have the means to an end because maybe I can get away with something while someone can't. Right. Uh, you had that great scene with him and Falcone talking about your Bruce Wayne. What the hell do you know about? You you can walk. Oh, he said he said you'd have to go a thousand miles mm. to find someone who doesn't know your name. name. Right. So and that, and mo- that, that was motivated still wrong. Him. That motivated right. him. At, well, yes, you're right, Josiah. It, it was wrong, but it was the justification mm-hmm. for Bruce giving away his his uh, fancy his coat, worldly possessions, his worldly possessions, and finding a new path in life. Right, but and I love this because Ra's al Ghul comes in like the mystical figure he is. <laughs> you may come truly lost, lost. <laughs> right? And he has. He's like, oh, uh, this story is so mature. What was I looking for? Right. Only you can know that. Right. I'm just mm-hmm. like, yeah. It, it, oh. I, I I literally notated at some point. I, I'm not seeing it right now, but I notated. I said, I said Ra's al Ghul gets every great line. At least in the the first third of the film, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Um, and it's so funny. So our, our mutual friend Ahmed was like, "I don't remember liking Liam Neeson and uh, as as Raza Go." And I oh, said, okay. "And I said you're gonna have to go back and rewatch this because I keep throwing out these questions. Like, wow, yeah. that is fire right yeah. there. I, I mean, he said, motivated that, me. That, I, I was like, like, like damn, I I maybe I should climb a mountain. Oh man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, and the funny thing is, I was telling him, I was like, I actually prefer this Raz Al Ghul in execution mm-hmm. to many Ra's al Ghul stories uh, because often he's he's looked at as almost an eco-terrorist uh, in the vein of a, a Poison Ivy, whereas here he's very biblical where he says, you have lost your, your way. Not you, Bruce, but uh, the people of Gotham the have lost their way. Yeah. And I, uh, when, 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 when Ra's al Ghul... Uh, yeah, tries to cleanse them with fire. Well, I, I, when, he, when he has that debate with... Uh, with Bruce about uh, about Gotham needing to fall, I said ah. that it felt very biblical. Uh, it reminded me of Abraham trying to justify to God 
to not take out Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and God says, well, if you can find 50 righteous among them, I'll spare them. And then and Abraham, and Abraham, and Abraham says, well, well, what if there are only 10? And God says, if you can find 10 righteous among them, I will not destroy uh, uh, the Okay, that's what the, the, he the kept bad. bartering is like, hey, and eventually lower that number. <laughs> he's unable to find the righteous, and 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 you know the the place is mm-hmm. destroyed. Uh, destroyed. And, oh man, and I love that uh, when Bruce Wayne challenges him at, at his house, he's yeah. like, hey, don't do this. There's good people here. And Ron <laughs> Uncle literally has a retort. He's like, every infrastructure we have been able to manipulate and go into. From Easily. the criminal to politics, politics to, mm-hmm. to yes. government, and yes. he's absolutely right. But but you just can't, uh, you know, wipe out. <laughs> and, and well, yeah. that, that, that's why I said it felt biblical and 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 so yeah, it, uh, 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 monumental. Yeah, in it, scale, it, it was crazy because it's it feels mo- like morally you know it's wrong, but at the same time with those same morals and your understanding just and like relating to real life and how. Like, we, we see our politics, how we see our government, our military, whatever. Like, we know there's corrupt people. We know Absolutely. there's imperfections. And while while the approach feels wrong, it, it you understand it in a sense. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. It makes you not question your morals, but kind of, like, second-guess yourself. Well, and, and especially when it comes to the concept of wiping the slate clean and giving those who remain the ability to do better. Mm-hmm. Because it's not as though he's saying, oh, nobody can yeah, live no. in Gotham. No, nobody survives. <laughs> yes. And he's like, oh, you know, we'll give you another shot. Yeah, and- I am about to say, whoever <laughs> whoever the stragglers are, you, you, you know not to repeat yourself. Right, but Batman is so interesting because he is the X factor to that. Mm-hmm. Gotham didn't have a symbol except for corruption. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Batman, and he took Ra's al Ghul's uh, line as like, hey, you can become uh, an idea. Yes. Yeah. And he's like, okay, fine, I can do that for well, God. And, and Roz even says to me, he's like, you took my lessons quite literally. literally. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, well, yeah. And he's like, well, okay, why don't I? Uh, and then, of course, and then we talked about this, um, but you said save it um, in our DC review of uh, the, the yeah. whole thing about yeah. the gun scene yeah. with Bruce oh, Wayne. Oh, absolutely, um, and I did notate it. Yeah. So, so um, yes, you, you both previously said that you believed Bruce would have uh, taken out Joe Chill. Mm-hmm, and absolutely. so I, even re-watching this, I said that, yes, he has a gun, but I still believe that when push came to shove, Bruce would make the right call. Mol- multiple times. Now, granted, when he says it multiple times, he is more mature and he has grown, but multiple times within this franchise... Bruce says, don't kill. Mm-hmm. Multiple times within this franchise, he makes the conscious decision not to cross the line. And so even though he gave the impression he could in the moment with Joe Chill, and it was taken from him, I believe that he still would have made the right decision because of all of the the development we see throughout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I stand by that, but I can also see where you guys come yeah, from. Yeah, uh, but I, I was, just, from I was just going to go and say, like, that to me is good storytelling. You yes. don't know the, of the yeah. We don't know the true answer. It's yes. the answer, but it's however because he, he never asked, got the choice. Ron's even asked him. He says, uh, "Bruce, why did you not avenge your parents?" And that's when we get the flashback scene mm-hmm. of him uh, remembering. remembering. And, yeah. and speaking of the flashback scenes, my goodness, this movie and and, and Chris Nolan, whoever whoever it is, somebody yeah, right. knows how to tr- transition. Yes. Like I don't, I don't know if it's the editor, if it's writer, director. Somebody knows how to transition yeah, because transition. everything right. is so seamless. Mm-hmm. When it comes to, uh, like I said, the the things I forgot to notate with Bruce falling and and then mm-hmm. uh, and now with the bats and whatnot. Like and oh, and my goodness, my goodness, I was so jealous every time we saw Thomas Wayne. I was like, this is a father that when he's there or being remembered. I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's a person that that you want to have in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whether it's uh, teaching the lesson of why do we fall, Bruce, or if it's him seeing that his son is in pain at the opera house and and he tells Martha, he says, "I mean, a little bit of opera goes a long way." Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. And then he wakes to something like that's that's some good um, character work for uh, 
for the father figure because mm -hmm. it just it shows his positive aspects and, and 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 it's not even just those like even when they're on the way to the opera um bruce has a very curious question that i myself have which is uh if you're a doctor pops why 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 is there a wayne found uh enterprises in the middle of the city he's like oh because smarter men than me are are helping this city mm -hmm. and so uh i personally struggle with the idea can you hear me this um with the concept of somebody else running my empire but while we're talking about the empire whether it's uh Wayne Enterprises or my 68 page graphic novel Everlasting Survivors Volume 1. Okay, there, well. <laughs> exactly, thank you, sir. There is a legacy when it comes to the Waynes, and I am trying to build a legacy when it comes to Mr. Super Oz, uh, Everlasting Survivors, Gamble Comics, and uh, if you would like to be like to be a part of that legacy, there is a link in the description of this video that will take you to the limited first printings that still exist for the Jeff Hicks cover or the Nick Crook cover. There were only ever 100 of these printed. There were only ever 50 of these printed. And uh, if you want to get yourself a copy, click the link in the description. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, um, and about Thomas Wayne. And what I love about that is even Ra's al Ghul uh, commented on Thomas Wayne's legacy. He's yeah. like, yeah, we were going to destroy it before your father. And we're like, okay, we can. <laughs> <laughs> your father's a good man. But yeah, your father's great. Well, we'll hold off for now. But. When it comes to Ron Zongo and when it comes to Thomas Wayne, mm -hmm. when I when I said what I was talking to Ahmed about, I was like, Ron Zongo is fighting, training with Bruce, and he says, he says you got to let that guilt go because your parents' death isn't your fault; it's your father's fault. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I was just like that thing cuts you deep. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And to me, oh, Bruce good. wanted to kill him. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, yeah. When he hit that, that was such a good line. Oh, yeah. Boy. So uh, Liam Neeson does such a uh, a great job within this to to hit all of the uh the spots that he needs to all the emo emotional notes as Absolute. on top of the uh philosophical Absolutely. Yeah, so he I I could no longer imagine anybody else in this yeah, yeah. particular spot. Absolutely. Um because he does such a, a well he he does so well. But but the the beautiful thing is so after Bruce uh, realizes that the League of Shadows is not the way, and he br he breaks away. Uh, there they want him to kill. Uh, absolutely, somebody. they want um, him to kill a what was it a thief? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But after he breaks away, I I realize immediately it's not just Roz who has all the great lines because when we get to Alfred in the modern day, he takes over uh, Roz Al Ghul's spot. Alfred Pennyworth gets all of the killer lines. So uh, when he picks up Bruce. <laughs> Uh, and Bruce is explaining to him his plan. Uh, Alfred uh, Alfred inquires. He's like, "Oh, so you're you're hiding your identity, right, to protect people?" He said, "Yeah, like Rachel." He's like, "No, I meant like for me." Yeah, <laughs> me. <laughs> like, like, hey, what about me? Yeah, I I got all your money now, and I don't want to be getting got. Like my goodness, all of that. Oh my goodness, yeah. Alfred is so uh, is great at stealing the scenes when he when he has. Uh, Screen time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, and this movie is one of the few that does a three villain. Uh, oh, it's a uh, villain, whatever yeah, you want to call it. Having more right. than one villain right. in your movie and it working. So Spider Man Three really should have took some notes right. on how to how to do this correctly. Because you have a uh, Falcone, Falcone, Scarecrow, Falcone. and Ra's al Ghul or Ross, however. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ra's Ross. Yeah. But yeah, like I think that was probably one of my favorite. Because technically, I, technically cool. all of them. That's us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it has like literally all three of these movies had multiple villains in them, and yeah, we'll have we'll, we'll talk about Dark Knight Rise, Rises obviously, but obviously the execution in all three movies, in my opinion, was pretty well like balanced. Well, and and what it does is it it gives each person a distinct role to play, right. which helps uh, distinguish their purpose within the story. Right. And but what what another interesting thing that is revealed unto the audience is that uh Carmine Falcone is in charge of all of the the drug trafficking, so that even includes the the fear toxin that uh Jonathan Crane is getting in for his scarecrow villainous character. Right. Um but that fear toxin is being uh uh sent to him by Ra's al Ghul. And so, like I said, the beautiful part, oh, and like you said, Zaz is 
uh, a hitman for yeah. Carmine Falcone. So mm-hmm. even though they all have their own roles to play, they all have that connection in the end. And so I think that's what really helps uh, balance out the multiple villains. Absolutely, is is that everybody has a, a role to play. And uh, everybody knows their place. Yeah, but can we give a uh, great, great uh, um, Commissioner Gordon finally? Ah, Uh, yes. So uh, (laughs) yeah, I actually remember Commissioner Gordon was in this film. So big improvement from the previous uh, All or Nothing we did for Batman. Absolutely. So this Jim Gordon, more than one time, has echoes of Frank Miller's year one, Jim Gordon. Mm Because year one of Batman was very much a Jim Gordon story. It was uh, him first moving to Gotham. Right. It was him realizing that his partner, Flass, is uh, on the take, or as it said here, uh, a part... I think... Part-time's not the right word, but he's a... He moonlights as an enforcer. That's what Jim Ah, says. Yeah. And so, uh, both of those elements, the fact that Jim realizes his partner is on the take, and the fact that he's the only uh, up, uh, positive character, right? Or cop, that is. He's, he's the only non-dirty cop. Correct. Mm-hmm. Th- those are those are pulled directly from Batman Year One, and even the scene where Bruce confronts uh, Jim for the first time, and uh, when Gordon is like, uh, there's only one of you? He's like, and now there are two. Or, or uh, well, with you there are two. And so I, yeah, so multiple times within this movie, I notated how the elements were pulled from uh, Batman Year One. And the funny thing is it doesn't end with Batman Begins. Uh, I see different pieces of multiple graphic novels pop up throughout the entire trilogy. And uh, it's just fun to see the appreciation that is shown to the original uh, source material. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always get that people who actually read the comics make the movies. Yeah. And um, now maybe I'm the only person, but I actually liked uh, Katie Holmes as Rachel. Uh, uh, I know people, yeah. they're like, oh, I'm glad that they got, but maybe I'm just like one of the few where I like, I th- thought she did a great job. I'm, I'm not, so I've never like had a problem with her per se. It's just she's not my, I guess not my favorite would be the best description of her. Okay. Like she, she, I think she played her, the role very well in what she did, and like especially at the beginning, I think she was she was really well well acted. But then like the rest of the movie, I'm like, ah, so she's a typical damn. Oh well, yeah, yeah, of. yeah. Since we thank you for bringing her up, I said I said this great line. I said uh, if this was a Tim Burton movie, when Bruce takes uh, Rachel to the Batcave, Alfred would have outed Batman as Bruce. Upon her waking up, because of that being what uh, Bruce or uh, what happened to Bruce via Alfred with Vicky Vale in yeah. Tim Burton's film. Yep. But yeah, my overall feeling with uh, the Rachel character is, I thought Maggie Gyllenhaal stepped well into the role as far as keeping the consistency of the execution of the character, mm-hmm. but she's so much freaking taller. That'd be like that'd be like <laughs> Josiah being cast in a role and then being recast with um, Michael J. White. <laughs> yes, exactly. So 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 Michael J. White is is executing the character like Josiah did the first time. Right. But every time you see him show up, it's like Bruce Lee mm-hmm. looks look down at this character, not not in uh, the uh, theoretical not, sense, but the physical like, sense. Literal. Yeah, the literally literal sense. used to look down at and, it. And now they're lo- now, now him and Maggie Gyllenhaal are basically eye to eye. And I was, that's what bugged me with, with the recasting. Yeah, I well, guess I guess upon back to back viewings, yeah, that would have exactly. And that's the only reason that I even noticed is because it was the back to back viewing. But yeah. I thought, I think I agree with you that if you could have kept, um, was her name? Katie original Holmes. Katie Holmes, Holmes thank yeah. you, original Rachel, I would have preferred it. However, I understand people have to get other stuff going on and move on and so so like I'm not, not like everybody comes back. I'm not like yeah. mad about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not it's not it's not anything offensive like going from uh Billy D. Williams to uh, <laughs> 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 or or hell, the uh, X Men franchise. Oh, oh you yeah. went from Peter Dinklage or you went you went that's, from that's, an, that's uh, another all or nothing yeah. we need to do. Yeah, but yeah. Oh that that, yeah. that would be that'd have to be a live stream because it'd last 
for about a week. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, Unless we split it up. We could split it up. We could do like trilogy, trilogy, whatever's remaining know, kind of thing. Oh, Lord. Lord. But, uh, and then also, Lucius Fox. Oh, yes. Uh, Morgan Lucius. Freeman. Morgan, yeah. I mean. Always good to have Morgan Freeman in your movie, right? Yes, yeah. So, Lucius Fox in uh, the animated series was not nearly as involved involved as Lucius Fox is in this entire trilogy. Which makes sense, because, I mean, if you're going to pay for Morgan Freeman, you better use him. Well, not just that, but what I like about it is Lucius Fox and Alfred have a pre-established relationship because they both have a link back to Thomas Wayne. Mm -hmm. Um, And this friendship uh, that you see demonstrated, especially when Bruce is early on and getting his butt kicked, (laughs) <laughs> and falling prey to the, the fear toxin. Yes. <laughs> um, you, uh, Alfred, lo- come get me. <laughs> Alfred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't wait to talk about so, that. Yeah, so every time that, that Lucius and um, Alfred interact with each other, I feel like it is the uh, the demonstration of Thomas Wayne's legacy living on beyond Bruce Wayne himself, mm-hmm. um, which uh, really... C- comes into play when it comes to Dark Knight Rises, which is one of the, the high points to me, and that being Lucius, still, even when the Wayne uh, Enterprise is not doing well, he's still doing his best to keep the Wayne name in a good light. Mm-hmm. Right. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I really have nothing but positive to say about both Alfred and Lucius because of, because of what they represent toward... Bruce and his family. Bless you. Thank mm-hmm. you. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Um, we're, we're real here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I can't, can't agree more. You had great, great points all over. So, um, uh, yeah, what's up? So, when I was watching these movies, I always felt that the three, there were three key aspects that they were trying to convey. And it was like, what is Batman? Or, mm-hmm. or Gotham City in itself. To me, the first movie uh, asked the questions about the mind. Yeah. of Gotham or Batman. The Dark Knight talks about the soul or the spirit of Gotham or Batman. And the third movie is about the body. Yeah, it's definitely me, about the body. Uh, that is one thing that I always take from mm-hmm. like the... But I will say, that, so while that is accurate, there is an overarching, never-ending theme throughout all three of the films, and that is fear and the acceptance or falling under it throughout. So... In the death scene of Thomas and Martha Wayne, the last words that Thomas says to Bruce is, don't be afraid. And then even in The Dark Knight Rises, when we meet Bane, he says, now is not a time for fear. That comes later. Or not now is not, but uh, this no, moment is something like it's This something, moment is not the time for fear. Yeah, yeah that comes later. Yeah. And so uh, while your uh, three parts, whether it's uh, or when you say mind, uh, soul, soul and body. body. I think that I think fear is one of the things that is being used to take all of those apart. Mm-hmm. Um, and because uh, especially within okay, because I'm going to use that line to move into the Dark Knight. Um, so I am going to use that. So mm-hmm. I think Bruce's fear of Gotham falling in the Dark Knight is why that he succumbs and and says, "Make me the bad guy," right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, but, but before we get to the Dark Knight, I just have to say this movie is great. I give it five out of five. It is it is hard to beat when it comes to so multiple times while I'm taking notes, I was like, I was like, okay, there's 40 minutes left. Please don't screw this up. Okay, there's 20 minutes left. Please don't do something don't stupid. Don't make a mistake. Don't make a mistake. Because I literally said I was like in 1989, you know, three quarters of this movie. We're, we're so Bang great, the and, then, and then the final the final fourth is when we got all the toy sales and the 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 bombs and the blah blah blah. I'm like, come on, guys, don't. Do... And so so I, I was I was so I was so gun shy as we were getting to the climax. And I was like, oh, thank God, we did it. So yeah. well, so as to Brandon me, says, he, uh, like, this is a little bit more of a mature film. Absolutely, they need to sell toys. absolutely. Um, they did, but they did, but right. they, yeah. they weren't the they weren't the driving force behind me <laughs> making the movie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so. Um, so yeah, personally, I give it five out of five. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, I'll 
Also a five out of five. Also, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's it, hard. it wasn't much of a debate. <laughs> yeah. So um, they they have a really fun tease toward the next film at the climax of this one where uh, Gordon has a, a Joker playing card, mm-hmm. uh, which tells everybody what's to come. Um, he also flips on the bad light for the first time. Right. Yes. So before we transition to the Dark Knight, yeah. I always I love it, but I feel that if the scene where Batman does not save Ra's al Ghul, people will have a problem with it now. To me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I, I guess uh, we didn't talk about Because that. they're fighting on the train, he beats them because he, you don't mind your surroundings. <laughs> and then uh, he's like, so have you learned to uh, finally do what is necessary, Bruce? And Bruce says, no, I'm not going to kill you, but, but that I'll doesn't have mean I have you. to save you, and flies off. And I was like, that is so great. Oh, it was but, a hard. It was a hard scene. But I feel like effect. people now would have an issue I, with that. What uh, you, what like you know, he killed him. He should have right. saved him. He, he so, should have, you killed him. Yeah. So I think even if that would have happened right now, I would feel the same way that I took the note. I said, so I don't have to read the line because you already stated it. But I said this is this is totally different than the straight up murder that uh, Keaton does. To the Joker. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's different than the, the Red Circus strong guy jabroni that he does with the bomb. Um, there is a difference between... Mm-hmm. Killing somebody and letting them die. Correct. And and it, especially in the case that... This, this, to me, is like Spider-Man jumping out of the way of the glider for Green Goblin. Yeah. Green Goblin it's set, exactly set, the same it, thing. set it up... And Spider-Man didn't stop it, but he did not set it up or make it happen. He just didn't stop it from happening. Mm-hmm. He basically took himself out of the equation and and Osborne let and, let, and let, let things happen the way they will. Yeah, 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 they will. And so I think that that's a, a strong difference. Yeah. And and maybe well, and maybe I'm influenced by the fact that we had done the quadrilogy uh, last month because. Yeah. Uh, but but I I do think that the quadrilogy really really, really influenced my uh, uh, opinion. viewing uh, opinion of this viewing because when I see this I think well this is a step above the knowingly uh, uh, making things happen instead yeah. of just stepping back and allowing them to uh, oh. yes okay because yeah. I, I just know people are like oh. The- Batman would yeah, always I, save no matter what, and yeah, that, that I, type of stuff. Right? Yeah, I've thought well, about well, that too, but that, also... In that argument, you can't always save, yeah. right? So he couldn't oh, save... You couldn't save Jason, tons of people. Jason Todd, yeah. Yeah, as, a, as a great example. Yeah, yeah. Well, trust me, yeah. I understand. I just Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I know you're not... Uh, yeah, when whenever people bring up the argument, like I, I, I get where they're coming from, but at the same time, it just it feels invalid to me, because like, I always think of like, okay, what if a doctor can't save somebody? Like, mm-hmm. they, they, Obviously, they... Did what they could, and they just passed. Does that make the doctor a murderer? Does that right? No, like he just could not save them. There was nothing that could be done. Yeah, so there's a difference and, between yeah, this is more trying choice, but... and not trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is 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 uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, so basically, we're saying the argument's invalid. Everyone's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, and, and I and I don't often say that the the internet is toxic. <laughs> well, that, that, that might be the right word, but what I was meaning is it's it's the cause of the fight, yes. right? Because when you're in uh, a real setting, and that's the reason I love doing this in in person with you guys, because yeah. like uh, it's just so much more personal, yeah. And and you can get people's legitimate feedback and not that you know uh, staticky question mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, my feet cut out while you were talking. Well, that well that and 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 you can per- perceive a. a text-based argument differently than a verbal right. conversation. Right, in person. Yes. Right, because right. I, I could say, like, oh, that was a great movie, and, like, say it like that, and, like, you'd understand how I really feel. But if I say that was a great movie, and it was just in a text, you'd be like, oh, you must have loved the movie. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, just, like, small stuff like that. So, uh, makes a difference. Um, I noticed, oh, I made an observation. Each one of these movies add 11 minutes <laughs> To uh to them. So the first one was t- two hours and twenty minutes. This cool. time, we are uh, two hours and thirty one minutes. And then in the next one, it's two hours and forty some change. Forty two. Yeah. And so it's just like uh, I just feel as though, and I, I, not just Batman, but uh, because of the su- the success Christopher Nolan has had in uh, multiple franchise or th- both this franchise and other films, it just feels like yeah. each time that he. Uh, makes a new movie. He's like, well, 
uh, I'm a proven commodity. I get more time, guys. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, honestly. It, to be fair, it helps when you have like an amazing actor like Christian Bale, too. To really... Uh... So, uh, the, the, the first time I watched... Or not the first time, but because I had so much love for... That's what I was trying to say. Uh, Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. I went back and I started watching all these things that C Christian Bale had done prior to the movie. Oh, you didn't like previous roles? Correct. Okay. okay. And so I... Uh, I, I watched something not knowing that I would, didn't want to watch it. So I watched American Psycho. <laughs> uh, that's what I thought you were. I knew he was gonna it. say. It. And and I was like, well, turns out I don't I don't want to watch everything that this man has made. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was it was not pleasant. I, I knew you were yeah, gonna that say that. <laughs> but you know that's why he got the role. That is hundred percent why he got the role. And he's like. That's Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Like, like he really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. saw him like. Well, got, well I mean, check out the the, the murderous characteristics and yes. Yeah, so yeah, I I see the best execution of of uh, uh, Bruce Wayne. One moment. So I keep thinking of a wrestler named Derek Bateman, mm -hmm. because Derek Bateman is named after Christian Bale's character of Patrick Bateman. Patrick Bateman. Thank mm -hmm. you. That was irritating. Uh, <laughs> that was EC3, right? It was EC3, yeah, okay, you're right. Okay. But his original yeah, character... Yeah, original NXT name is yes, No, I right. just make sure it's you're the good. same guy. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You, you, you are correct. But so, the the clearest illustration of Bruce Wayne being uh, analogous to Patrick Bateman from American Psycho is, to me, shown in The Dark Knight when he chokes out Harvey Dent. So, uh, Harvey is talking to Rachel at a fundraiser. As you do. And... And and so she's saying how that she she can trust and rely on Bruce and he's like I don't know I'm I'm not feeling good with all these uh, fat cats and all their money and then Bruce comes up and chokes him out and he's all shh to, to her while he's dragging him to yeah, the closet. Like, what is going <laughs> on? Yeah, like they're here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and then but but even after that scene he so he tells her you know you know go get the safety right, right. but then he. Walks down the hallway, sees these two people uh, uh, fooling around. Getting busy. He exactly. He he opens up a uh, what they call a panic room. They close the door and they're like they're they're, they're now in panic because they can't go. <laughs> and this to me is funny. is the 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 uh, the the dropping of the veil of the millionaire playboy because that's something we didn't talk about right. nearly yeah. enough in Batman Begins is his 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 mask of. Of the billionaire playboy was so freaking perfect, and 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 when he goes to the hotel and his his, his model friends are are swimming in the the, the pool, pool and, right, and, and, and he says the ah they're European they were, they were swimming in a fountain a fountain right, that's yeah, right that's right, right. he right. says ah they're European yeah if it was a pool it'd be less ridiculous exactly. you're right you're right it was a fountain not a pool my bad but um and he tells he tells the guy who's telling him that they can't do it. He's like, oh, don't worry, this place is under new management because I'm going to buy it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going right. to change the rules. <laughs> right, right. He's, uh, uh, because Alfred says, hey, you might want to go out. He's like, why well, don't want to go People might need to see it. Because people will get suspicious if a billionaire doesn't go out ever, they're going to start asking questions. Like, and, clearly. Well, and the, like, what is he doing his the, time? The, the great, the great line is, he says, he said, and if you pretend to have fun, you might have some by accident. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that was a great yeah. line. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah, Alfred. Man, Alfred really does have great lines. Oh, so the whole movie. The, the, the whole, whole franchise, franchise, whole franchise, franchise yeah. You do all those bloody push-ups and <laughs> bloody log. I'm like, yes. And even Bruce is like, yeah, you're yeah, right. That's a great, <laughs> you know, that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> like, you do all those push-ups and I'm like, you can't move this bloody log. He's like, yeah, you're right. I feel like there's an entire YouTube video just dedicated to Alfred's line. Oh, I yeah. Movies. It, so, uh, a friend of the channel, Ita Pukui, and he has all these, uh, these pop-ups that, that he'll have, uh, I know a lot of like Grace Randolph and other people where he'll, he'll just have them drop lines. Right. If if I ever get the technology to to just pop in with the the lines, it's probably just gonna be Alfred <laughs> every time just, just <laughs> dropping the fire because <laughs> uh, he's he's got all the good stuff. Oh man. Uh, but right. but yeah, so uh, uh, the Dark Knight. There's just so much content within the Dark Knight, so yeah. much quality content within the Dark Knight that. That like that's that's how much we can get lost in, in just that one scene of yeah. of, of the the dropping of the billionaire playboy, and him into turning the into cycle. well no, that no. or 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 just the straight up Dark Knight right yeah. he's not wearing the mask but he's one hundred percent in that moment he's Batman yeah mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so 
like I said, that's just, that's literally just one example of how. Yeah, and that was one scene well about what thirty minutes in. Uh, probably. Like, like I, I don't feel like that happened pretty early. I, I don't always notate the time, so let's see yeah. if I get on that one. But uh, but uh, it, it that seems yeah. reasonable, especially for a, a, a two hour thirty two minute movie. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, the the fact is, within the Dark Knight, it's not just Alfred and Bruce that do great work, and like like I already said, Maggie Gyllenhaal keeps. Rachel on a good level, but right. but all the int- the newly introduced characters they take things up a notch. That being Heath Ledger's Joker, boy did he take it up a notch. And then subsequently, uh, Aaron Eckhart's Harvey Dent. Mm-hmm. So the introduction of these two new elements to the film or the, to the film's franchise mm-hmm. have really helped uh, bring things to a new level. And and the the best part to me about both of the characters is how believable they are, which is ironic because of Harvey Dent's you know can't campaign that everybody likes to make fun of, yep. which is uh, you know I believe in Harvey Dent. Yep. I was so into that before I even saw the movie. I I I was out at I, I swear it was a hot top, but it, it's somewhere in a mall, right? Yeah, yeah. And I saw a uh, a spiral notebook that that said I believe in Harvey Dent. I'm so into uh, Harvey the character, Two Face the character that. Without watching the movie, without knowing the execution, I was like, I saw that. I was like, I'm buying that. You know, I know it's not a real political. Uh, I believe in Harvey Dent thing, but I was like, I'm buying that because yeah. I, I've, I've always thought Harvey was one of the best uh, examples of Batman's Rogues Gallery because of uh, the 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 Two Face we grew up on in Batman the Animated Series, mm-hmm. and while Aaron Eckhart falls just below that uh, that Harvey Dent in my mind. He's he's the best, the next best Two-Face after the animated series um, to be made because of the animated series acknowledging that, that Harvey had the split in his mind before he had the physical split on his body. Right. And, uh, and uh, like... Again, Alfred's not the only one with great lines here in this film because Joker delivers hit after hit after hit. You want to see a magic trick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, before even, can we just, that beginning. Oh, the opening uh, scene. Opening with the, the bank robbery. Yeah, yeah, setting up everything so you know that this man is smart, <laughs> mm-hmm. tactical. Uh, he nope. doesn't really care about necessarily people. Doesn't care about human there, life at all. There is a means to an end, yes. basically. And honestly, like the whole vibe of Joker, right, like, is motivated like normally like when you have like a villain like they want world domination they want money they want women they want whatever yep. Joker I he, want a he's better just, class of criminal yeah, yeah. <laughs> like th- this man was literally just out there having fun and you can see it in Heath Ledger's performance yes. throughout the whole movie he's just like let me just have a ball with this character yeah. I'm just gonna enjoy myself but but what I love about this is it is right the escalation it it takes what Ra's al Ghul motivated. Bruce to do, mm-hmm. and inadvertently Batman. Well, what the Joker has said is like you complete me. It's oh, like yeah. he he. I can't live without you. you right. Can't it's live like without me. motivated him to take the next step yes. per se, and it's like yeah, it's and, and it asks very good questions. It's like what are Batman's limits? And Bruce Wayne says Batman has no limits. Well, that is tested over very and over. Well, and over well, and well the over. funny thing is that. When when we're at the interrogation scene, uh, Joker uh, says says scene you in the whole movie. What's that? <laughs> that's my favorite scene in the whole. So movie. So he says that uh, we found out that you you uh, you have a line you or you have lines you won't cross. He says only one. He's like, well, if you wanna you wanna win, you're gonna have to cross that one line. Mm-hmm. And uh, and here's the best part. I know I know you said it's your your favorite scene, so feel free to talk about it as much as you want. But mm-hmm. I love that in the climax of the film. Joker loses, and Batman saves the Joker from dying, being, dying or being killed. Yeah. And none of the people who Joker is trying to get killed choose to kill. Yeah. We'll get to that later, but yeah, it's like another great my scene. my goodness, it's this is is so anti Tim Burton's approach <laughs> because yeah, it's, it's literally the exact. <laughs> oh my goodness! In so many ways, it's 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 everything I want. Batman, like so many times uh, within the quadrilogy, I was like, 
Uh, Batman would not be doing that. Yeah. Why would Batman smile for putting a bomb on a guy and just let him blow blow up? Like, come yeah. on now, guys. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. yeah. So the reason I love this interrogation scene so much is because throughout this whole movie, like um, uh, Christian Bale's Batman and uh, Heath Ledger's Joker don't really interact. Like they have that moment, uh, those uh, like couple minutes at the uh, at the party where Joker like like. Where, where Joker actually believed that Batman was Harvey Dent for a moment, just mm-hmm. for a split second, and and in the interrogation scene, he says, "Does Mister D- or uh, does uh, the district attorney know that you have a thing for his woman?" Yes, and I'm just like, so "You're so great. freaking smart, He's Joker." So smart. And 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 oh, um, sorry, I'm interrupting. No, you're, like, you're, you're good. I I almost feel like this Joker is legitimately doing. An anti-Batman. I think that he's mm-hmm. only wearing the the face paint, like Batman only wears the mask, to to be a symbol, to be an illustration of the way things can be. Because he's so calculating with mm-hmm. all of his stuff that that he is legitimately one step ahead in so many different ways. That I think that he is doing the the Batman back to Batman. Right. He's exactly. the antithesis. I mean, yeah. like, Joker even knows, he's like, I'm not going to beat you in a fist yeah. fight. I'm about to say, if we fight right now, I'm going to beat you in a fist I'm fight. I'm not going to beat you in a fist fight. I've never had that dissolution. <laughs> right. But Doesn't that, mean I'm not going to fight you, though. Right. Yeah. But he's like, that's not the point. That's and not the goal like, here. The soul of Gotham or the people yeah. is what he's trying to, He's he literally is trying to inspire chaos. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Batman's trying to establish law and order or Goodness, however you want to. Yeah, some sort of balance. Joker right. said, "Oh, balance. I can do He's the exact like, no. opposite of that. No problem. Give me right. one second. So, uh, and then, um, go ahead. Sorry, no, you're good. But yeah, so just back to the interrogation scene, right? And this, let's be honest, Joker knew the whole time what was going to happen, which I think is back to Oz's point of his intelligence being immaculate in this movie. Um, and then, like he he lets, um, because I think Gordon was in there first, so Gordon leaves and says, "Oh no, we got another guy." Coming to take care of you for you. <laughs> and then the lights go out. Batman pops up right behind him. First move. Head bang. Never go for the head. <laughs> and then, <laughs> first. Which is, it was so great because it's it, it, it would feel like such a serious moment. But then you realize, oh wait, this is Joker in this scene. Oh. He's going to crack a joke. He's going to try and try and laugh. He's going to poke and prod Batman's buttons. And throughout this whole scene, the chemistry that Heath Ledger and Christian Bale have is incredible, mm-hmm. like, and it's seen best in this scene for me in the whole movie, which is why I love this so much. And it, it gets to the end of the interrogation where he's like, you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to cross that line. And you're going to have to pick which one do you want to die. And then purposely gives him the wrong address because he knows which one he's going to choose, mm-hmm. which then makes it even better because when Rachel dies and he knows that Batman loves Rachel, yeah. He's using that to try and get oh that my extra goodness. push. I love, I love, kill. When, I love when Aaron Eckhart, uh, Harvey Dent says, "You know, no, not, not me. me. Why are wrong you person?" Yeah. 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 And, and then like, you have Rachel. She's like, "It's gonna be okay." Gonna be okay. Kind of, because she has that realization, like, "I'm going to die." <laughs> yeah. Well, and here's the thing that I love about uh, Rachel, the character, is that even before she's taken, she's already saying goodbye. She says goodbye to Alfred. She leaves a note saying goodbye to Bruce. And and it's not a, I'm going to die goodbye. It's a, I'm going to break you goodbye because she knows she's choosing Harvey over Bruce. Right. And by choosing Harvey over Bruce, she knows she's losing Alfred. And um, and so that is a very noble move on her part to, um, uh, to, to say her goodbyes to her lifelong friend of uh, Bruce and uh, Bruce friends. And Alfred. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so it, it inadvertently uh, works in this way of her of her saying goodbye because she's dying. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's very poetic the yeah. way it all plays out. Oh, but and I love that this is also what I love because it's like the subtle uh, aspects of like this is what happens when you involve people who yeah. are not like us. Yeah. Yes. People will snap. Yes. It's yeah. like Harvey Dent is just a normal man. Yeah, right? he's human. uh Commissioner Gordon gets pushed to limits. He's yeah. just a normal man. Yeah. He starts doing things that are well, and he like, hurts his family. But, right, by, doing by, things by he saying, shouldn't. right, yeah, yeah, I died. Uh, please tell my family I'm dead. <laughs> right. So uh, um, don't really sell this ruse. So something we accidentally skipped over uh, because we're jumping in and I was praising about that awesome Batmobile scene where well, it turns into the Batcycle. 
Yeah. Well, what I was going to say that we we actually jumped over an early scene where uh, where Bruce has inspired a bunch of normal people mm. to put on. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, padding that they think he's wearing, which he's got way better. Yeah. Um, to try and stop low uh, things that they think they can stop because uh, the scarecrow is no longer. Uh, the big bad in this film, he's just a low-level drug dealer, mm-hmm. and the, the the people who took uh, who are pushing the drugs are, are mad at Scarecrow for for That's selling nice. for for selling a scary a drug that will scare them, and they're right. like, we won't repeat customers. And he's like, well, you know what I'm selling, <laughs> and so then we meet we meet the regular people who can't get the job done, and 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 Bruce tells them, you know, I'm not just wearing hockey pads, you know, go home, you you regular folks. What, what makes you different from us? <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pads, <laughs> and, and so. Uh, <laughs> So what I was what I was going to say about that is, I believe had Heath Ledger lived, he would have been not a drug dealer, but he would have been treated with the respect that Scarecrow was re- uh, treated with, and and had a smaller, still chaotic but subtle role within the Dark Knight Rises, and and, and one of the reasons Especially why all that chaos that was happening. One of the reasons why I believe that is the case, and, and and maybe less believe but want it to be the case, is because we were talking about chemistry, right? Mm-hmm. And people working well together. I, I, uh, I know that Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Heath Ledger would have worked so well together in The Dark Knight Rises because they were best friends in Ten Things I Hate About You. Yep, they were. I forgot about and that. Now, now, just imagine a world where you have... Uh, Officer Blake being the guy who's not not just going in the tunnels and figuring out a uh, little henchman stuff, but working to stop the Joker from doing chaos right. in this chaotic period where, where yeah. Bane is taking over. So, oh my goodness, if only he could have made it, I think that that would have made for a great subplot, which would have made uh, Blake even more valuable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that was me jumping ahead. No, yeah, that's, yeah, that's wishful thinking. I mean, to be fair, we've been bouncing in outside oh, yeah. to side with all these movies because, again, benefit of hindsight. But absolutely. I mean, there's just so much yeah. uh, to love. I like the Dark Knight. It's I, I try to. I don't. I like to be hyperbolic a lot. Like you know, hyperbole. Uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole. Yeah, a lot. But um, to to me, this is one of the greatest movies ever made. One, yeah. it. Do you guys know what was regarded as the best superhero movie? Uh, before this? Yeah, before The what? Dark Knight. Um, One of the Superman movies? I, don't know. I have no idea. Uh, Blade, maybe? Mm-mm. No? Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, that's hard to argue. That's where, hard where people argue. would say, yeah, like, Alfred Molina. A, right. Um, it, it was a great movie, the, so the, I can, I can the, see the, it. The, the, the stopping the train the, gimmick. The Jesus. Yeah, the Jesus yeah, scene. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, people yeah. regard but, Spire Me but, too. But that, the, so. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot that movie came out before this. No offense to, yeah. no offense to Spider-Man 2, yeah. but... It's nothing compared to this. Exactly. Yeah, like, that's where I was doing. like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a drastic a, jump. As a matter of fact, I like Spider-Man 2 a lot, but yeah. just the comparison between the two makes me want to give this, and by that I mean I'm going to give this my second ever six-star rating. This is a spectacular film. The Dark Knight is, again, my only my second ever six-star movie uh, from the channel because I... What was the other one again? Uh, Limitless. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, it was a movie I rated solely because bad weather time. It yeah, was around yeah, the holidays. You know, just it was just, it was just a it was just a solo job. But like uh, when I was watching Limitless, I it, it it always gives me that hype of success of making it, uh, and I was just on a high throughout the whole thing. So I gave it my first six star uh, rating. But yeah, so the Dark Knight is so well executed. I can't not give it a spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I was. Literally, Oz just took the word out of my mouth. It doesn't even compare. It's not even on the same. It's not in like, the same ballpark. Like, it, but and, and that's the thing. Like, Spider-Man Two is not a bad movie. No, 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 like it's an actually a really great movie. Yeah, exactly. And it's because of it being so good is what makes this one stand out to be so much better. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's just incredible. Yeah. And like, like we're just sitting here talking. We've been talking for at least 20, 30 minutes at this point. Just about. Like we were talking for like ten minutes each, and we've only talked about three scenes realistically. <laughs> yeah. Right, and this movie is so dense with content Absolutely. that you can we can talk basically yeah, the whole talk, thing like, about this one. Now. I would like to say we right. we, we haven't talked like about the boat scene. Like we hinted at it. Oh, oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I want to hop on that real quick. Yeah. Right. 
So, only because I notated things that are going to be fun pop-ups. So I said, hey, look, it's Zeus. If only Rip was here to stop him. I know, I know Brandon's not going to get this reference, but no holds barred. Tiny Lister plays a, a, a heel in wrestling named Zeus. Mm-hmm. And Hulk Hogan plays Rip, who takes takes down the big bad. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, when, it, when Tiny steps up and, to take the detonator, I was like, oh, if only Rip was here to stop him to take him down. Because no holds barred. It was a, it was a cheese fest. My mm-hmm. goodness. It, Boy, was it a cheese fest. My good, the like, description so it. it is not... A WWE Studios film. It was the prototype to Vince McMahon making movies. Okay. Uh, he made but it, it like definitely 89. felt like a WWE Studios. Oh, film. so if if we ever if we ever get a chance to review that, it is it is some, <laughs> it is some real dookie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is that, uh, that's uh, also uh, a reference to the movie. Yeah, I'm about to say I I, I will have fun uh, talking about that movie because you know how much I love Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I have I have affection for it mm-hmm. because. It came out at the right time for me to like it because I was like five and it oh, was okay. it was it was uh, you were the target you were the target Power audience. Rangers yeah. right oh, okay that's, that's yeah like not good mm-hmm. but enjoyable boy oh, okay yeah well here's the thing like if you depending on the Power Rangers episode you're watching in the like you world, know what I mean I'm like, talking about this overall, good Power Rangers like, yeah. yeah you're talking about the yeah. concept the, yeah, the yeah. general you know yeah, the yeah. the big explosions and the like the whoa cheese. he did six backflips <laughs> yeah so uh, but yeah so I. I love the legitimacy of the boat scene, but I, I also liked my making fun of it, too. Yeah. Because um, Tiny actually tosses their detonator. He says, yeah. we're the bad guys. All right, so hold up, because we didn't talk about any of this. Yeah, the setup. So, uh, I'll do the... So, Joker uh, basically plants two bombs on two separate boats. So, one boat has uh, is carrying prisoners. I think they're like being transported to the raft or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or not the raft. But they're they're just being transported off. Uh, yes. off, off of the island. Yeah. And then another boat is just like regular Civilians. business, civilian, mm-hmm. working class people, yada yada. And Joker comes over the intercom and says, hey, hey, guess what? There's two bombs, one on each of these boats. And your boat has the detonator to the other boat. So, here's what you can do. If you want to live. <laughs> if you want to live. All you have to do is blow up the other boat. Yeah, but you have until 12 o'clock uh, yeah. midnight. Yep, because if you don't, then they're both going to blow up. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> Happy hunting. Right. And then, and this brings this, uh, Brandon's like uh, earlier comment about the soul thing, so the morality yes. Absolutely. Of, the, uh, of this movie. Because the whole, I think, think if you were in this situation, you'd be freaking out like, oh my God, there's prisoners over there. They're probably going to kill us. They... They, yeah, they're I prisoners. Think, they're yeah. criminals. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think one of the characters literally said, "They they've made their choice. But we we, we right. shouldn't have but to that suffer." That was a civilian. Yeah, yeah that, that was a civilian. civilian. Just like they made their choice. They made like, their choice. Fine. Nobody's gonna do it. Well, I guess I, I guess I'll be the guy. Right. I love it. And I love that the prisoners, Debo from Friday, Debo from Friday, Debo, he <laughs> said. He's like, give it to me. He it's said something that you should. I'm so glad already. you made that reference because yeah. I, I meant to, but I didn't. <laughs> and he just throws it and he tosses it out the. And he literally does it because. On the boat, the reason the prisoners don't blow it immediately is because there's, like, three officers in there, and they have the detonator. Yep. And they're like, okay, everybody back up, back up, don't get close to it. And, of course, everyone knows what Devo looks like, and if not, Oz will yep. flash a picture for you. the reason we brought it up. Yep. But he, uh, the dude literally just says, just give me the detonator. You can tell them I took it from you. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with you, big guy. And then, like Brandon says, he tosses it out, cause the, which is so incredible because, obviously, like, the feeling is, oh, my God, he's the biggest, scariest guy in there. He's going to blow it. No well, problem. And re- in reality, he's now saving us. Yes. Right. So we, get to, we get to use the excuse, well, he, he, he'll, he took it from me. But in uh, the, uh, the, the prison guards are like, well, okay, here you go, yeah. so the, I get to live. I right, get to yeah, right. the moral conscience is moral not conscience. on me anymore. Yes. Like, right. the pressure is on me, and that same pressure, so the guy we were talking about earlier, like, okay, I'll pull the switch, I'll make it happen. And then he's sitting there, and he's weighing the consequences of ending all those human lives, and eventually comes to the conclusion he can't do it. Mm-hmm. And, and then you get the uh, infamous line from Batman, he's like, what the, what the hell are you trying to prove, that deep down everyone exactly like you? Yeah. And you just see Joker's face, it's like, actually... Yeah, that is. What I <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that was the exact point. point. Yeah, that, that's what I that was want. the goal here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, he said, "Whatever, I'll blow it myself." Yeah, I'll do it myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but it was it's, it's such a good scene. It's such a powerful scene because of like. So, uh, I I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. so I gave it six. What what about you, Brandon? Oh, 
Six. Yeah. yeah. Josiah? Yeah, I'm giving it seven. It's my favorite. It's seven. All right. Oh, yeah. Josiah yeah. is the first man to give a movie yeah. perfection. Yeah. So I, I can't argue with that. It's just, it's a struggle. But yeah, yeah, I love it. I'm glad you did that. But the reason that I, I interrupted your point and wanted to get the rating out for uh, this film is because I think that our, our big praise for The Dark Knight is a lot of why that my notes for The Dark Knight Rises are so negative. Yeah. Because... It's clear to see what Joker wants. It's clear to see how Harvey Two-Face got to where he's at. Right. But what is not clear to me is what in the hell is Bane's motivation? Why does he crash this plane? Oh, I, I, why got, he, I got you. Why does he crash the New York Stock Exchange? What's going on in the sewer? Nothing about what you were doing makes a lick of sense to me, sir. Yeah. Now, in so, defense of The Dark Knight Rises, Catwoman is a cat burglar, and I couldn't tell you the number of times I said, thank God, this is not Michelle Pfeiffer's <laughs> uh, freaking secretary gimmick, because that well, thing was bad. what about Barry? Didn't ever watch it, refused yeah, to ever yeah, watch yeah, it. Yeah, I don't care what's going I'll, on I'll the channel. Good, I'll, I'll, I'll We'd have to watch every movie that ever existed before I'd think about watching Halle Berry's Catwoman. <laughs> as, as someone who has watched it, yeah, you made, you're, you're making the right decision. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, already, I, I already saw so the screensavers that we popped up last time that this uh, conversation occurred, and I'll put them up again. Uh, and that's as far as I need to go with Halle Berry's <laughs> Cowboy. But yeah, so to, to so here's here's the thing. Bane's situation is basically he's just a giant simp for Talia. Like he he's literally just because Talia actually made me mad too. But yeah, I, I hate, no, I hated I hated all of that. So the, but the, just, the, the pretend time was what I disliked. Like if she would have had the uh, the the guts to come out and say what she does in the climax, if she'd done it early and said, if she done it like three I'm, hours in ago oh, instead of four hours into the movie, right? Yeah. yeah. So if she if she would have been so confident to say you took out my dad or took down my dad, I'm taking you down. I would have been much happier with her. But well, this, it's it's so this ridiculous stuff. because she sleeps with him first. And and then later on is when she makes this big giant production of oh I hate you so much I'm like what's the point of sleeping with him if that was your goal right because at least in the comics when she uh, when she takes from Bruce what she wants so that she can create an heir mm -hmm. it's because Ra's al Ghul lives yeah. and he wants Detective Bruce Wayne Batman to be his uh, successor yep. and then Bruce turns him down. That's why she takes what she needs from him to create the heir to the the demon's head. Yep. And that being Damien. And then those he those, to those things all make sense. But right now, that like you said, her sleeping with him had no relevance other than we want sex. No point. Uh, yeah. No, oh, they they're so just like, oh, we really need this. You know, what we're missing in the the prior films some titillation. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess. Yeah. My my issue with the Dark Knight Rises is from the inception of it being created because ultimately it's saying that the choice that was made at the end of the dark knight was wrong mm -hmm. yep. that that uh the lie that batman um will take the blame yeah he can, kill dark, because Harvey he has Batman. no limits he can be whatever he wants he's an ideal yes yeah. you can which make, was established from the start, start yeah. right yeah. Um, oh, that was established from the start of the uh, yeah, Batman, Batman Begins. Begins. Right, yes. right, Batman can be whatever he wants. And that's even what Alfred was like. You you should endure those things. Yes, yes. Rachel notes she died, but you're you're bigger than that. Yes. Right here. Um which was is such a uh which is such a fatherly advice to, to get and be given because Alfred is his surrogate father, he's his he's his stand in. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, you are strong enough. Uh you, you do have what it takes. And and it's beautiful. And as a matter of fact, so not only do I agree with you, but this is why I wish Dark Knight Rises was not uh, was not the final film. I wish that there was an intermediary, but I'll, I'll get to that after mm -hmm. you continue your point. I'll, I'll tell what I think could have made for a better okay. um, third film. Yeah, it, it's just, and I don't believe that from the Bruce Wayne that we got and the Batman that we got from Begins mm -hmm. to the Dark Knight, would have stopped at the end and not been Batman for what seven years? Eight, eight years, eight, yeah. eight, 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 eight years. It was eight years. So and become a recluse. I agree. Uh, everything. It, at first, when I first saw this movie, I actually enjoyed it a lot. But it's repeat viewings. I kept going. And I was like, no, it's that made just, of steel. Right. You're right. And it just and so well, my, I hated Man of Steel from the jump. My issue is that well, me and him both had the uh, the initial enjoyment 
And then the more we would watch, the more we would analyze, the more we would analyze. Uh, the more you would realize, actually pay attention to the movie, right, the more you would realize, like, oh, oh, this, oh, this is an error. Yeah. Uh, now, what I firmly believe, uh, you haven't seen it yet, I believe that they should have taken, oh, even though this is years in the future, the the art, the the plot in The Batman with Robert oh, Pattinson, okay. and done that because... Are you talking one? So, we are one hour and five minutes into this video, and I will announce here and now... Even though when it hit theaters, I refused to watch The Batman because of the execution of The Riddler. We have watched the quadrilogy. We've watched the trilogy. It's only right that we watch the final, well, the current the iteration recent. of The Batman, and that being The Batman. So coming in March for current critique on the channel, Mr. Super Oz. If you guys want to come back, yeah, I all got right. You. We will all talk about The Batman, which I have not seen, but because Brandon told me Catwoman's a cat burglar and Penguin's a mob boss, I was like, all right, we got two out of three, so, <laughs> so uh, I'll take it. Um, and Falcone is also oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Uh, yes. but, um, but basically, what I, because the main plot is of The Batman is that uh, there was a lie that was uh, being told and uh, with... Thomas Wayne's foundation, uh, this money, and it was used actually for money laundering. Oh, yeah. really? For Falcone. He was actually... Um, without giving too many points. Right. Points. Without... So well, that's like what... That. So that's why... Um, and that is what caused, like, the Riddler, because they were siphoning money, yeah. and it was going into Falcone's pockets. Well, I don't like yeah. that. And, and um, it affected Riddler in a way. Right. Uh, but if they would have taken that and just used that for the dent act, yeah. and gone like... Hey, yeah, that would actually help. It would have yeah. made someone, and then the Riddler. He doesn't have to be a uh, a psychopath, but also he's very smart, and he figured out. Yeah. Oh, they lied, and um. And I want to reveal my intelligence, right. By figuring it out. That's I'm what I would. Smarter like. than everybody, basically. So, um, I see where you're coming from. You know, you you turn me against the Batman once again. So <laughs> thanks, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah. but like I said, it's been announced we're doing it, so whatever. Uh, please don't suck. But um, my thoughts upon watching rewatching Dark Knight Rises is I wish that this movie a hadn't taken place eight years after the Dark Knight, but also if we had an intermediary film, right? We had the Dark Knight, then we had Robin Rises. If we had Robin Rises, um. So let's say it releases at the same time, 2012, right? But it happens a year and a half after Harvey's down. Uh, so really Bruce can't stop himself from doing the right thing. So he's still out there stopping Mad Hatter, and he's out there doing whatever. He's just not wearing the horns on his head. He's just wearing his old uh, uh, rounded mask. cow. Yeah, ski mask, exactly. Takes the bat off, but he's, he's still out there stopping because he does. But he's still putting up the face of billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne. He's at... The, the death of the Graysons, and then he raises, this is what happens in Robin Rice, he raises Dick Grayson to be a better version of himself. He doesn't have, so Dick doesn't have to go run away to learn, he brings him into his house. He raises him to be the better version, and then we do the Bane storyline, plus Riddler, where we have uh, a, the movie, and we call it Nightfall, where if Christian Bale's done... Which is definitely a better name. Um... Well, because it follows the Robin Rises, it's Night on Nightfall. And so, actually, this reminds me of a note I took. I, I quit reading the dang thing. But <laughs> while watching The Dark Knight, I was like, why couldn't this be where we expand the universe from? There's so much rich depth and quality to all these people that why couldn't we make this the world where we... So, um, Anthony Michael Hall, a man that I love uh, as an actor, he plays... Um, he plays a reporter in The Dark Knight, Mike Engel. Mm. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. I, I thought to myself, man, if Mike Engel had had ties back to the Daily Planet, then we we could have really expounded upon this great foundation that uh, was set. And like, if we'd have made uh, Robin Rises and then Nightfall, then. Dick Grayson, who is trained by Bruce, could take over the cowl when when it's revealed the truth that he didn't kill Harvey. 
And and then if we'd have if we'd have introduced a, a Wonder Woman and a Superman, then Dick could be the long term Batman going forward, assuming Christian Bale's done with the franchise. Man, like I said, I just there's so much good in this the the first two thirds of this trilogy that if you if they'd have changed the finish and not at all, subsequently not finished, then I would have been so happy to keep staying within this world, but uh, because, like you said, it seemed like they second-guessed the decisions they made, said that, oh, we were wrong. It's kind of why that I feel like not only is Dark Knight Rises the weakest of the three, but I, I almost feel like it just barely passed the test. I only give it a two out of five. I think that it it has good elements, but just so many other things about it are weak that I, uh, yeah, it... This will probably be the last time I ever watched The Dark Knight Rises. I'm okay. going to pretend like it did not exist because the other two are so good that I can watch <laughs> yeah, them yeah. over yeah. and over without yeah. being here. Yeah, because my thing with The Dark Knight Rises was, right, so I didn't watch it in theaters. I, there was a reason okay. why I couldn't, but sure. I just didn't watch it. Absolutely. So the first time like, I started watching it, I fell asleep during the movie. If I had to, if I had I, to guess, I think he was at his prom because he was in elementary school in the prior, so he's middle school oh, yeah. in, yeah. in, the, in the, the second one. So he's, he was probably at prom. The first <laughs> graduation was, party, something yeah, like that. It, 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 it was the first prom, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, right. But yeah, so I was, was watching this, this movie, and I, I didn't, I didn't even finish it. Like the first watch around, like it, like I had to try to rewatch it twice before I actually got through the whole movie. And I, I think the reason for that is because they literally, like you guys have brought up before. Had pretty much reneged on every major decision the Dark Knight had. Yep. So another one that you guys didn't mention, but I feel like should be mentioned, at the end of the Dark Knight, uh, Alfred chooses to burn Rachel's note. Oh, yes, because, you're right, absolutely. Because uh, he believes, sorry, Bruce believes that Rachel would have stayed with him. Mm -hmm. Rachel would have been with him. And Alfred, of course, knows that that's not the case and also knows that knowing the truth might break him. Yes. And that's not what this city needs. Turns out didn't make a difference because literally at the start of the movie, like Brandon says, he's a recluse anyway. Mm -hmm. So Alfred just says, F it. So yeah, about that uh, Rachel situation, Bruce, uh, nah, she was not with it. She was going to choose her. <laughs> yeah. Like, it didn't go down that way. Pretend I had a British accent and that was basically what he said. And then Bruce, like, upon hearing this, says, get out. And kicks Alfred out. Alfred's gone for the rest of the movie until the, end. the, the literal very end. Mm -hmm. Which, well, 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 actually, let me ask you a question about yes. Alfred and Bruce. Because I, I, upon rewatching this, I literally called Brandon. I paused the movie, called Brandon, said, "What is your take on the climax of this film?" Because I've always thought that this was Alfred envisioning the world that he wanted it to be. And then Brandon made points that were interesting. But what? So when? When Alfred is telling Bruce, the the seven years you were gone, every year I would go on vacation, and I would imagine that you were happily married and that you had moved on from your pain. And so in the climax, we see that Alfred sees Bruce, Bruce with Selena. Selena. Yeah. But in my mind, it's just once again Alfred projecting what he wants, what he feels, what he lo would love to be reality. Because in the in the back cave on the back computer. Alfred sees Selena's face. And when he even told her to go take the meal up to him, to him. So I could see him wishing that it was her and him. Uh, but Brandon's take was... Oh, yeah, that he's alive. That that he's not dead, that he's alive. Uh, uh, but do you know why I can't believe that? Why? Because that means Batman quit. Yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, he I did. hate... He did. But, but that's also, what happened. <laughs> right. But he, I, I don't think that he quit, though. I think that he died in the plane. That he gave the, the, the mm, bad stuff to well, here's my thing. Blake. And here's how I know he's alive. A, <laughs> Lucius literally said, the autopilot's fixed. He fixed the autopilot. That son of a... Yeah. Bat? Son of a... Yeah, son of well, a bat. Yeah, I was trying to, talking, trying to not sweat. They say, uh... He's like, what could have been done? I just want to know. And they're like, sir, the autopilot. The autopilot fixed. got fixed a while ago. Like, what you mean? <laughs> when, when was it fixed? And they said six months ago. Right? Six months ago. Oh. And right. then you also have the bat uh, symbol being repaired and yep. fixed. That's with Jim Gordon when he goes up. He's like, oh, who fixed the? Oh, sorry. Yeah, they destroyed so, the bat symbol at the end of Dark Knight. Too. Right, but to, 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 to me, I guess again, this goes back to the whole Batman Begins argument of will Bruce kill or will he not kill? Right. Mm -hmm. This, to me, 
I feel as strongly about Bruce quitting as I do about Bruce quit. Uh, I, I feel as strongly about Bruce, Bruce quitting, quitting as Bruce as killing. Bruce killing. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to my Bruce Wayne, the only way Dick Grayson becomes Batman is when he's displaced in time. When it comes to my Bruce Wayne, the only time he's not Batman is he's dead to the world. He's out of time. He's gone. He's he's poof. He's snapped. He's Thanos away. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes, Bruce, my Bruce Wayne, in my mind, the man that believes in doing the right thing will not just up and go hang out with... Uh, when in Rome with uh, when in Rome with, with Selena, with Selena <laughs> exactly because to that and that's the reason I have to believe that it is it is Alfred smiling at his own vision of the world as he wants it to be. And you know what, Oz? That's beautiful. And I'm not gonna crap all over your hopes and your vision of Bruce Wayne. So I will just say, me personally, uh, Bruce was alive and well at the end of the movie. I think they went out of their way to make it abundantly clear that was the case, and. Yes, he did just quit being Batman because Christian Bell A was not coming back for another movie, and B they were done. So they wanted to give Batman a happy ending because he's a naturally tragic character. And let's be honest, gotta put some smiles on faces at some point. My other thing with it though, and I and I agree with Oz's earlier point of the, like the Robin Rises thing. Like I feel like if they were to continue the fran not not the franchise, but the the universe, the universe, yeah, then I I feel like. They should have done more to like build his successor because, I mean, I, I I knew that they were pretty much building for Bruce to just give him the Batman stuff at the end of the movie. It was pretty obvious because I've seen a movie before. Well, but, that, and and he uh, they already gave Blake Officer Blake yeah. so many different elements of Robin's plural that yeah. I knew watching it he was an amalgamation because with. Both dead parents. He gets both uh, Dick Grayson and, and no, no. He gets Dick Grayson's both dead parents. Yes. Then by being able to figure out that Bruce is Batman, Batman he gets Tim, Tim Drake's Drake. origin. And um, by having a hard upbringing, he gets Jason Todd's uh, 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 life because background, yeah. background exactly because you know Jason was the one who had the the hard life. Hard life. That's now, why he was such an aggressive Robin. Exactly. And so he had. Pieces and parts of each of them put together, yeah. which is why in the not quite post credit, but the the end of the movie, it's revealed that Officer Blake's real first name is Robin, which I find yeah, it's not literally not, Robin. Not quite ridiculous, but it's like it's so on the nose. It's like it's almost too on the nose. Yeah. It's almost like it was a bad idea. Well, that's and once again, that's my my issue with the Dark Knight Rises. Is usually I'm not one of those people that say like, oh man, they tried they. They crafted a narrative to, <laughs> to make something work or right. fit, like in a death of a character. It's usually I'm like, okay, whatever, I get it if I just don't like it. But they they went out of their way to try to paint something where Bruce Wayne will want to quit and retire. Oh, because okay. the previous two films, it they, never that, was not, that was never That wasn't happening. Because right. he just wouldn't. Like like Oz said in his ideal Bruce Wayne, Batman would not quit. Right. That's, not in, that's not how he thinks. It's not in his mindset. And he can be stopped, and that's why I like the idea of planning for the future. Yeah, like, right. He's just a man who is building something more than himself. And exactly. that's And so if if he's dead, which that's why I choose to believe he's dead, and this mm -hmm. is Alfred imagining, um, then I'm, I'm happier with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you squint, you can say in the Dark Knight, well, he wanted to be with Rachel. Yeah. But it's like he... And that's why he wanted to throw everything towards, like, Harvey Dent, per se. But yeah. even then, I'm like... But uh, and and here's another reason I think he quit at the end of the movie because he quit in the beginning of the movie too. He just quit being Batman. He wasn't Batman for eight whole years. I didn't like that either. No, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's my, like he had, but that's what I'm saying. At the beginning of the movie, on this film. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I think, I got, at the beginning of the movie, they set the president that he quits. Yeah, <laughs> like, but that's just not my Bruce. So right. Like, I know. I, I, know. I, I listen. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. all for it. I'm with I know. you. I trust me. I hundred percent. Oh my lord. That's why it's like. But yeah, where are you guys at? You, we can keep talking, but just go ahead and yeah. put your ratings out there. I, I, I honestly don't, because there are some good things in this movie, and and it's like, from a technical sense, it's good. Yeah. Uh, well, because, like, as far as technical sense, like, yeah. Christopher Nolan is like, I have this idea to hijack a plane, 
with another plane where we're gonna latch this plane onto that plane and then we're gonna cut it and we're gonna cut a we're hole the, in it and, and we're gonna pull some people out and then we're gonna sacrifice them. and it looks no, no, pretty. We're gonna switch the blood and tra transmute uh, it so so it has his blood in there and then you're and, sacrificing for the cause. Yeah, and, and, and it's like and it's like is it pretty? And well executed, yeah. Do I give a damn? Not in uh, the least. You're right. I, I think this is the greatest example of like shiny object hollow inside. Yeah, it, it's, 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 like, it looks I think it's his, really good. I think it's but. his success or the success of the prior films have led to the feeling like we can't fail. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think originally they didn't even want to make one. I think, really? Yeah. Oh, and this I is a major Warner, force situation? Yeah, and I think Warner Brothers Oh, that's, like, that's another you Warner Brothers to, thing. So they're like, Warner Brothers did it again. All right, that's fine. That's what I, 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 I'm I like 90% sure they were like. Honestly, oh, I wouldn't. If I was I wouldn't, them, be I wouldn't, wouldn't make this movie. So yeah. just, just from the vibe, I'm like, did you guys really put any effort into yeah. this? Like, yeah. this movie's longer, and I think that's the only change you made to it. Yeah. Like, because you literally, like, I think somebody watched The Dark Knight and said, okay, we got to do the exact opposite of everything we did. Like, literally to a T. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I'd give it, I, I'll just yeah, give it a three. Three, okay. Yeah, yeah three. that's fine. Yeah. That's, if, that's, uh, if that's how you feel. Yeah, I'd, I'd side with you, it's probably a two for me. Okay. I, I, was, I was borderline about to give it a one because I literally, it took like three attempts for me to finish it. Well, and, but and the, like, as, like as, said, as, as, I, as, as I said to Brandon last Monday, uh, when I was going over the new scale structure, I said, I feel like a one, and the fact that you failed doesn't mean that you didn't try. Yeah. Um, so, uh, if, if you uh, if you want to go two, that's fine. If you want to go one, I understand. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I just, I, I put it as a two because I did finish the movie. Yeah. There were, I, again, I talked a lot of crap about it, but there are stuff, there was stuff in this movie that I'm like, okay, that's really good. Uh, I really like the execution of Catwoman in this movie. Yeah, absolutely. It's, as we previously said, it was better than the last. And I like franchise. I like the, the Talia actress. I just want her to have the confidence Depth. from the start. Yeah. Not 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 magically two hours. Not magically gain confidence. Like cause, oh, because this is a swerve I saw coming from I the next first, century. First, the, the first minute I see her. I'm like, oh, I know who you are. Just be honest with it. Just, just say who and, you are. And I think that if had they been honest with it from the start, it would have helped justify Bane better because it took me forever to be like, why are you, why are you here? here? Like, oh, you're driving me nuts. And, and if I'm watching two hours of your movie and I don't know what your villain's main plan is or main goal, then that that's a problem. You don't know their main goal? You keep saying it. <laughs> you know, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. That's what he can't say. I'm going to break you. That, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. I hate that voice. I hate that stupid voice. So like, that's literally it such a, It's such a waste of Tom Hardy. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. It literally could have been anybody under there with that voice. I didn't know it was Tom Hardy until two years after I finished the movie. Right. Like, I had no idea. I'm like, yeah, you know that was Tom Hardy. I'm like, what? Yeah. That's been him? Yeah, the, the weird thing is, like, I... I I personally f think of Bane as not quite Hispanic, but like uh, I was always Hispanic. What, what I was gonna say is like, uh, or at least like not Hardy. Tom Hardy is what I'm ah, trying to say. Ah, not a white guy. <laughs> and yeah. so like uh, I've, I've I've seen people uh, push for Dave Bautista, who's Filipino. Oh, see that and, that would be a great Bane. And so and so when it comes to. Uh, Dave Bautista, who, like I said, is Filipino. House of a Man, too. A uh, House of a Man, exactly. <laughs> Don't need the CGI, nothing. He's just like, he walks in, it's man like... He walks in like, ah, oh, straight muscle. Ready yeah. to go. Be ready for um, the action. Uh, Already has a bald head. And then, and so I I could see a Filipino, right? Or, mm -hmm. or like, a, a, an actor who just has... Naturally, that. naturally... Like, a little tan. Yeah, a little, yeah. little bit of the darkness to the skin. And I yeah. think, it, actually, I think it's Young Justice that really gave me that that uh, backstory that made oh, me yeah. want him okay, to be... Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they they had him uh, operating from well the, the even even the the cave where where oh he he worked his way out of this it's like that's that's from yeah a, and then it turned out it wasn't Bane it was Talia yeah the whole time. So you guys know that was a Lazarus pit right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That was that was glory that was what yeah. that, that was yeah. Uh, yeah, crap. I, I didn't, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I didn't catch it because I, 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 like I said, I couldn't finish the film the it's first so... few watch throughs. I just stopped caring. Yeah, like, midway, just... like I saw the tie into us coming a you mile know, away, and as soon what? as I realized you it, I'm what? like, I, don't I think, care. I think this ending is perfect for the way I feel about the next Batman. It's a downer. I'm, I'm not looking forward to it, and. 
please let me be wrong. Oh, I'm going to say, I think that Oz will give the Batman... A, the Batman? Yeah, I'm thinking going to give it a two, but possibly might give it a one, only because it might be long. I know that's long. Oh, no, not might be. It's long. Yeah, it is long. Is it longer than this movie? Yeah. Oh, God, the, oh, please. I, think it, I thought it was the same length. Isn't it close to oh, the no, So, so this, this movie, yeah, The Dark Knight Rises, is then. two hours and 42 minutes. Uh, yeah, I think it's long. Right? Which is far too long, in my opinion. Well, for how badly it's executed. Oh, like, yeah. you give me 10 more minutes of The Dark Knight, I'm not going to complain a, a bit. You give me 20 more minutes of Batman Begins, and I'll be happy as hell. So it all comes down to execution. All right. Do uh, you have the answer yet? It's a long oh, Okay, so I'll keep rambling. Um, so, as because we had this conversation. Wait. We had this. One of us had this conversation. One of the one, um, one of the set. Who did I say this to when it come when it came to? Uh, oh, it was you and me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, because uh, because because Brandon said, oh, what what do you think about uh, the Lord of the Rings? I was like, oh, it's way too long. I said the only thing that I can think that length added to made for a better movie was Zack Snyder's Justice League, which went uh, took the theatrical cut, which was two hours even, and made it four hours and some change. And the reason that I thought it was superior is because of the way that it was because executed. It was an entirely different story. Well, the way it was executed, it said part one, part two, part three, part four. It See, was, that was good. Yeah, I like that. Because I'm you, like, okay, I can. you can ingest it in a, in a manageable way. So, yeah. uh, two hours and fifty six minutes. Yeah, but I was just about to say that. Yeah, and so, so it's literally a three hour movie. Yes, and so what? But what I was saying is like, as long as it's executed well, that's all I was going to say. Because just like this video, it is obnoxiously long. We went one hour and almost. 30 dude, minutes. Dude, this isn't even the longest video on the channel. Me and you did this. I, I know that, but yeah. what I was going to say, as long as it's executed well, yeah. it's enjoyable. Exactly. That's, that's all I was going to say. Yeah, 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 I got you. Uh, and just because some videos are seven minutes long, as long as you get the point out, we're good. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's all I was going to say. So uh, I, I find your uh, take to be interesting, and I will take that into consideration. But God, here's what my problems are. His hair is on his face when he's, he's I'm sad. Because I'm he's, he's emo. But, but, but no, no, no. The, 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 because he's the wolf from uh from from Twilight. No, he's the vampire. From Twilight. Oh, is he the vampire yeah, from Twilight? Yeah, vampire. Can you tell I haven't watched those movies? <laughs> oh, you never have. <laughs> never once. Okay. No, so the the wolf. Is, I had no intro. The, the, the wolf is the kid from uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Taylor Lautner. Oh, for real? Yeah. yeah. Little, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So. Uh, Dang, I am old. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's, oh, I, I, I just thought that was a fun little. Uh, oh, that is. Oh, because I loved that movie when I was a kid. Yeah, well, I love the fact that that movie made uh, the wrestler Shark Boy a lot Shark, of money. Yeah, you got got my guy some money. I got him a payday. Man, good yeah. for him too. Cause yeah. I, yeah, because he's because he's Disney, the trademark. So Disney came out with their their big energy, and they're like Shark Boy and Lava Girl, and uh, then the wrestler came out and said, "I own that." Ah, I'm Shark Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember doing this movie. <laughs> they, yeah. they said, "Well, how about we pay you to go away?" He said, "Deal, <laughs> deal." Say less, Disney. Go ahead and give me some of your millions. Sorry, billions of dollars. Exactly. But um, no, I oh, did you read this? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you said two. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. Um, yeah. but no, I. I love that the first two films were so strong. Yes. And it makes me sad that the third one was weak, but like I said, I, uh... <sighs> it just never made me mad. Like, like how Glass made me, like, actually, like... Oh, oh, well, that's mm. a good, that's a good, uh, analysis. Like, that's a phenomenal analysis. Yeah, like, where I was just, like, let down. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> well, especially because, right. uh... I'm not mad. Because we I'm had Unbreakable, <laughs> which was so great. Right. And then split. so many years later, you had Split, right. which I didn't even know was a part of the franchise right. until no the end did. of the movie. Yeah, that right. was intentional. Which was beautiful. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then Glass was just like, ah, oh, you could have did so, so never, much more. I've never done this before, so I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. And if I fail, I apologize to the viewer. But I'm going to put a link to the All or Nothing for uh, the East Rail trilogy. trilogy. In the description, see if that works, mm-hmm. and you should check it out because it was a fun, uh, was a fun yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, and, and you'll see, see why it's like I gave that movie a two because once again, to me, a, a, a two is when you take a big swing, and it, if it hits and connects, great. Right. But when it doesn't, you you really it, say say it was a grounder, it flew right under the plate, <laughs> right, it, or you All just miss the swing and completely. And I don't think. The Dark Knight Rises, I think it just hits, and it could have been just a regular grind route out, or it could have just 
Really it's never gonna end. I don't. I don't sorry. think it was the same but, man. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, but, I don't even think you got yeah, on Facebook sorry. about it. Yeah, it is. It's gone long. But, <laughs> That's uh, okay. But, it yeah. was so freaking fun doing this, guys. Come back on Wednesday for the Wednesday rewind. See you this Friday when uh, we'll do a Friday freestyle video because uh, I don't remember what I put on the docket. Got it. But um. But yeah, it's it was great. Thank you. Yes, sir. And thank you. Oh yeah.